So uh, Rob and I were both raised by uh, two of Kenosha's entrepreneurs. And um, when, I was, when I was a boy, my grandfather, uh, who owned a car lot near it, in the area, used to pick me up on weekends all the time, almost every weekend. And uh, he did a lot of cool stuff. With One of the places that we went to all the time was here, right at this location at Villa de Carlo. And uh, it's when I got you know, hooked on the pizza, but it's not just the pizza, it's, it's the memories that you, that you make at a place. And so I've decided that I, I wanted uh, him to know when he's watching that this episode of 262 Eats is for my grandfather. Love you, Ralph. <laughs> so with that, we're gonna try some pizza here. And then we're gonna go inside, and talk about the restaurant and the pizza and the food. And we're gonna do what we always do on the show, we're gonna eat. Start to eat the manjat. That's what he's telling me. Shut up and eat. <laughs> As a busy realtor in southeastern Wisconsin, I'm constantly on the run. Whether it's a lunch with my clients or dinner with the family, I always love trying new restaurants. I want to share my favorite places to eat in the 262 with you. I'm Ralph Nudie, and this is 262 Eats. So we're sitting in Villa de Carlo, right by the harbor in Kenosha. And this is Robert Skolviak. He is the owner of Villa de Carlo. And uh, this restaurant not only has great food, it's, a, it's got a great story. Rob, tell us about Villa de Carlo. It was started in 1957 in Columbus Park by Carl. And he started in a small tavern. Then in 1962, we bought the location here. And uh, of course, a lot of people know it as Carl's Pizza as opposed to Villa de Carlo. And I remember the uh, delivery vehicles and they would say, you ring, we bring right on them. With that, yeah, that's picture. still our that's still our delivery model. In fact, that's your grandfather sold us all those uh, delivery vehicles. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, that, uh, that definitely is before both of our time. Yeah. So uh, obviously people always want to know about food. That's why they watch. What, what do we have here? Tell us what this is. This is, we just started. This is a special. It's an out of pasta platter. We have different meats, cheeses, artichokes on there and everything. And uh, we just started this a few days ago. Wow, that looks really nice. Thank you, sir. Tell us a little bit about the pizza. Tell us a lot about the pizza. Tell us what makes your pizza so good, because it is a really good pizza. We cook our pizza on stone ovens. We make the dough, the sausage, everything in-house. Okay. Uh, that is our main item. We sell quite a few pizzas. We're very well known for it in Kenosha. What makes that crust? What makes that crust so good? Cornmeal and cooking on the stones. On the stones. Okay. Yeah. And rolling it out really thin too. Yeah. It, it's really. There are obviously in Kenosha. There's so many different styles of pizza, but there's nothing like yours. It's it's got its own distinct style and its own distinct crust that I could tell you. I could tell a Villa de Carlo crust from any other crust, probably blindfolded with 20 pizzas in front of me. Well, thank you. <laughs> uh, what what are some of the traditional uh, Italian dishes that, that you've been serving, the stuff that tastes like Nana made it. And tell us uh, tell us a little bit about... Well, homemade okay. raviolis, we make them here, gnocchi, our lasagna. Uh -huh. We have different Italian pastas and sauces. Gotcha. Here, our own homemade uh, marinara sauce on our uh, spaghetti. Now, your, your, your raviolis are quite... They're, they're, they're quite good, and I know that they have the, the, the traditional ravioli filling. Meat, That's, cheese, and spinach. Meat, cheese, spinach, little breadcrumbs in there too, right? And cheese, yeah. yeah. So neat because that is how I remember ravioli being made even when I was a kid. They had to be hand crimped with a fork, flour all over the place. And uh, I really enjoyed watching them make it because the process really isn't any different from doing it homemade other than maybe rolling the dough out of a machine instead of hand rolling it. But everything else uh, that was done is done in the same way that, that anybody who grew up in a traditional Italian family probably remembers homemade ravioli being made. Well, we saw a bunch of the kitchen, but you're going to show us the garden, too, where some of your uh, fresh veggies come from, correct? Yes, we grow a lot of our uh, spices. We have uh, mint our mojitos. Uh, we get all our oregano, basil, tarragon, uh, chives, basil. We make uh, a lot of basil pesto. 
perfect. Pesto in our pasta. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. It's near the end of the season. The rabbits uh, ate the bottoms of my beans, so they didn't do too good. But uh, we got a lot of tomatoes and peppers and a last push on the zucchini. Perfect. Perfect. Good stuff. All right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, diving into a meal here and showing everybody how good it is. Well, thank you very much. All right. It's been a great experience here at Villa de Carlo talking with Robert Skowiak about this restaurant's history, our, how long our family's been breaking bread together. When it came down to deciding what to eat, I had to choose a ravioli because this is one of the few places that makes it the way that I remember it being made as a little kid. And I just had, had a habit. As Rob and I sat on the patio, and as they used to say in my family to all the kids when they're making too much noise, statajiti manja, shut up and eat. And of course, we gotta do this the old fashioned. Oh my goodness.